I ended up being in, in juvenile hall and in jail, I guess, in the system since I was 14. Be out for a month or two, and I'd be right back in jail. I, I remember feeling like getting in trouble would get me the attention that I wanted. Um, I had kids. I have uh, five kids, three sons, two daughters. Um, told myself I was not going to drink when I was young because I saw my dad drinking and in the condition that he was. And but I ended up uh, drinking and um, and I didn't stop. I guess the biggest change in my life, the biggest um, eye opener, let's call it that, was about uh, seven years ago, where I went on one of my drinking rampage and and um, and the police was involved they actually reported that that day to um, DCFS of what was going on in the home because my children reported that they they would see me do the things that I would see at this point they're a little they're bigger so they see and um, get a phone call from DCFS and says, if you go back to the house, we're taking your kids from me. And I didn't see my kids for a long time. After the incident happened, I got on my knees and I prayed, God, I don't want to hurt my family anymore. I don't want to hurt my family anymore. I, I don't know what to do. I did things my way and they didn't work. So I, I think he let me do things my way until I saw him. And I saw him in that situation. I've seen him in the past seven years. I've seen him work in my family's life, my kids' life, and my life. I believe my transformation wasn't like an overnight transformation. Well, after that situation, I came here to church, and I came here every week. Before that, I was only coming once in a while, once a month, maybe once every two months. And I joined the, the men's ministry. Being around other believers, you know, brothers, was encouraging. Um, that that's where I, I think that's where it started the, the actual transformation. There, I ran into Pastor Steph, and I asked him when I, you know, if I can serve. He said, "Yeah, when you want to start." He was come on Sunday. I was like, "Oh wait, that's too soon." And he's like, "No, come." I'm like, "Okay." So that's how it started. I'm the overseer for the children's ministry and oversee just to make sure everything's, you know, all the classrooms are, are set, everything's set, make sure everything's ready for the kids when they come. I make it a purpose to greet every single child, and not only child, family that comes to that door, and say goodbye to them when they leave. That's one of the most uh, exciting parts of my duties, I guess. I mean, a lot of it has to do with just the way God has transformed my heart into this angry person that I was, this very bitter person that I was, um, raging alcoholic, into this very tender, loving human being. I know that I could have not done it by myself. It's God, that's it. Let's welcome my brother Rudy. Is he here, brother Rudy? Come up. <laughs> Let's give brother Rudy a hand. <laughs> Again, uh, as I was thinking about tonight, the Lord just put Rudy in my heart. Uh, and I know this video doesn't give us a lot of, uh, of everything he went through. And I wanted to choose tonight to kind of expand on what the Lord has done in his process uh, to be where he's at now. And I know that... Uh, he, he just took a new ministry, and we're going to talk about that last. Uh, but again, uh, uh, Rudy, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us, Ben's Life, and again. And, uh, and I'm just going to ask Rudy some questions, because I know that many men are here are partly where, where he's at, where he was at in the beginning, right? You know, they were coming. I don't know, if does the Lord have a plan for me? What am I doing here? 
So as I was, I was praying, you know, uh, the Lord put word in my heart. And the Lord said, listen, now we're show the man that one of the ways we do life here and how we glorify together is through testimony, God. So again, his testimony has been uh, a blessing to many. How many of you guys here have heard it for the first time? Oh, we have first? Okay, good. All right, awesome. They play his testimony, I remember, at the, uh, at the, the main sanctuary. And uh, when I saw that, you know, it really brought tears to my eyes because I seen this man grow. I was, I was there part of him when, when I thought in moments that, you know, I don't know if, if he's going to be able to uh, make it. But again, you know, that's what today we're going to expand, right? And again, so we're going to expand. And again, you know, going back, as we started in the book of Philemon, you know, one of the verses we use for men's life was chapter 5, where it says, Hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus. You know, and again, I want Rudy kind of to expand more in his testimony, you know, of his love and faith that he took. To be able to continue to stay and again, so again, Rudy, welcome to, uh, to thank you for joining us tonight, Amen. Thank you. And and, and the first question I'm going to ask you, you know, uh, you know how important it is to invest into someone, and the reason why I asked that question because again, you know, uh, I know that we talked uh, how you came in the first time, you know what, and you felt like the outcast, like mm -hmm. right. So let, let's open up in that topic. Let, let's talk more about that night when you first came in. Well, I guess the first time I came, um, I sat all the way in the back, like close to the door, so I, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, I was pretty messed up when I came in. I, I, I was still drinking, um, and, um, but I know I needed a change. And I was coming to church. Um, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was coming to church and uh, all, sitting in the back as well. And um, as soon as service was over, I was gone. I was out of here. I didn't want nothing to do with anybody. Um, and, um, yeah, so when I came here, I would hear it on the announcements, man's, 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 and I, I would just, but it was tugging at my heart, man, I know I needed something. I had been to rehab already um, three times, um, so I tried to, you know, quit drinking on my own, but it, it didn't work. It worked for a little bit, and then I would relapse. So when I, um, when I came here, like I said, I sat in the back, and I sat the first time, and unfortunately that day, I heard the message, and when it was time for groups, um, I got up and I left. I walked out. Nobody, I mean, not to sound like a whiner, but nobody, nobody greeted me when I came in. Nobody talked to me. Nobody, um, and when I left, nobody questioned me, so I, so I left. Um, I said, okay, so the next week came, and I said, um, uh, let me give it another shot. So I said, okay. I came in. Um, again, I sat in the back. And, uh, and again, I wasn't greeted, and, and I was okay with it, but I was just like, okay. And I, but I remember saying that I was talking to God, and I said, you know what, God? If this time nobody talks to me, I'm not coming back. I'm like a spoiled kid, right, or whatever. And, um, and yeah, nobody was talking to me, and so I came in, I sat down, and I was about to leave. And we used to, they used to set up tables in the back for the new groups, and um, as I was walking out, um, this brother right here reached out to me. And he asked me, hey, do you have a group? And I said, no. So that's where it started. He, uh, he reached out to me, and, um, and he said, well, you can come to my group. And, um, and yeah, so then I stayed. Ever since then, I came. There was a, there was a time in my life where I did um, stop coming. But, um, but yeah, it was this brother here that actually reached out to me. So what, you know, what you're asking me is that, is the importance of um, of looking out for me now for what I do now and you do too and I learned it from you guys you know from the leaders is is you know look for that new brother that comes in because th that was me exactly. that was me yeah. see the word of God tells us in John 13 34 a new commandment I give you to love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another you know when and again he he's sharing from his heart and how many times that we come here and we don't see somebody and we don't know, that's why I always encourage you. Listen, if we are men of the word, you know, we are to love one another. Pastor Chad, in his last message, you know, he says, hey, look who next to you, that's your brother. You know, and that's what, again, I see what Shane, you know. Uh, thank God, you know, praise God that, uh, again, that the Lord, I was available to, to see him and reach out with him. But the beautiful part is that that was just the beginning. Because now, uh, I, I think I got your number, and, and that's it. I didn't stop bugging him. 
you know what, and, and we developed this relationship. It was so beautiful because, you know what, uh, he reminded me when I first came in. I first came in, same thing, you know what, uh, you know, once you live that whole life, you know, you leave your old friends, uh, you know, it's pretty much like everybody abandons you, right? And then you come to church and you're trying to build relationship. And one of the things that I, I didn't see is that I was also, I, I wasn't, uh, people didn't reach out to me, so I would go back and try to go hang out with my old friends, even though they were smoking and drinking. But I just need to be somewhere because I was like, I have no friends. I mean, I, I mean, I have friends, but they're from the world. And I remember they going there. The Lord said, this is not you no more. You're a new creation. So I remember he came back, and I go, well, you know, Lord, instead of me whining, I'm going to love on people. And again, that's where it started. After reading the word of God, you know, we, we, we love because he first loved us, right? So again, so important is the question I ask him, how important it is to invest into someone it's really important because, you know, you see, we see now from this testimony, you know, sharing from his heart. And again, that's why here in your group time, you know, make sure you guys invest in you because you never know what your brother's going through. You know, again, so beautiful again, as Brother Rudy was sharing you that, again, that he told God, if nobody talks to me, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. But how many have come and said that? And many have left. You know, let me tell you, man, God brings men here so we can love them. And one of the things I was sharing last thing, last Tuesday, you know, uh, you know, what is ministry? And it's building the kingdom of God, building, uh, building up. And the way we could do it, it's through one another as we come together. So, again, we thank you again uh, for being honest in that. You know what? And I know that he said it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. So, again, it's really important that we invest in one another. And we see last week, right, uh, we were teaching about how, how uh, Paul invested into Timothy, right? And here in 2 Timothy 2, 1 says, You therefore, my son... Paul again talked to Timmy, be strong in the grace which undeserved favor that is in Jesus Christ. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You know what? And as Rudy, one of the things we were sharing, you know, one of the things he said, Albert, you know, I want to do the same thing. You know, I want to do the same thing. I want to be able to, uh, to love on people, you know. And again, just uh, as I was continuing to reach out to him, and again, the first couple months, I'm going to tell you, he was a hard hit. You know, I was so more and said, Lord, I don't know, but, you know, uh, we will have fellowship in my home. I will text him and call him, and he will share more about it because he, he will share one day when I text him. He was in the middle of getting drunk, and then I called, and he came. So my next question to you, Rudy, says, following the way of Christ, why is it so important? Why is it so important following the way of Christ? I know the word tells us that the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of life is eternal life, right? The gift of God is eternal life. We see that. So, again, how important it is, how important it is to follow the way of Christ? Well, for me, I, like I said, I tried to do things on my own, and I failed. Um, yeah, I would succeed for a little bit, and then you know, uh, I would go back to, to my old ways. And even, even coming here, you know, I, you, like you were, you were saying, I came here, but then I would have my, my moments where I would leave. And as soon as I would leave, I know that I was doing things on my own, and um, it wasn't Christ's way. So, um, so yeah, so, so you, you fall away, and you go back to your old ways, and... And uh, so, so yeah, doing things his ways. Um, I learned over the years is that um, you know, uh, doing things his ways is the right way. It's the only way because I try to do things my way. Like I said in my video, is I tried it for many years, so I knew the difference. So when I saw the difference of trying to, you know, doing the things his ways, I saw it was work. Hey, it's working out. You know, this is working out for me. I, I I'm good. I'm clean. And my, I got my kids back, and I, I'm getting having my life back, you know, uh, slowly but surely. But he worked, like I said, I, he was working in me slowly, you know, but because um, I was hard headed. So, <laughs> but yeah. So. You know, and again, as we, I just read the verse, the wages of sin is death. You know what? Uh, I'm not pretty sure Kate is sharing. I remember that uh, as I was discipling him at the beginning of his, of his, of his years, you know what? Um, you know, he, again, he was going back and forward into, um, he called, he called me, uh, he was in jail, and, and I was like, oh, no. and, and the Lord said, continue to encourage him, even in jail. And I remember I told him, I said, Rudy, call me, I'll take your collect calls. Uh, so let's, let's say, because you found something out going there. Well, I mean, a lot of, like I said, the way I, I was doing things his ways, but then I also, I was, I had one foot in the world and, and I was still struggling. Um, and I say that because of what I want to say is keep coming back. Don't stop coming because you will have those moments 
don't, don't quit. So that's one thing I didn't do. I had a hard time, but I didn't quit. Well, anyways, I, and I say that because um, I had this, this uh, season in my life where I, um, I did not come. And I, and I see that's the difference, that I knew that when I didn't come, I was setting myself up. And, um, and um, like even he was saying, like Albert was saying is that, uh, that one time, and I'm gonna share this real quick, is um, <laughs> I share it with everybody too, is I was sitting in my truck, I got off of work, and I would use the same, I was this excuse, oh, I get off of work late, and I wouldn't come, but it wasn't that, it was just I was drinking. So um, I sat in my truck, and I had a, had a routine, I went, you know, I went to the, the store and I bought me uh, alcohol beer, and I sat in my truck, and I was about to drink, but I know that God was talking to me already because he was telling me, got to go back, got to go back. And as I, <laughs> it's funny because as I grabbed my, my beer, and I was about to crack it open, I get a text. And I'm like, so I look at my phone, and I ignore it, it's this guy. And he's, <laughs> he's texting me, and I'm like, whatever. And I'm about to open it again, and he calls me. And I'm like, oh, gosh, this guy, man, seriously. He, I was like... <laughs> And I'm like, I'm not gonna answer it. I'm not gonna answer it. And I just looked at it and I looked at my phone and I'm like, all right, let me see what he wants. And then I answer it and he says, what are you doing? I was like, I was like what? come on, man. I was like, uh, nothing. He's like, oh, okay, then come over. I'm like, right now? He's like, yeah, I'm like, he goes, my wife made dinner. Remember, I remember Maria made dinner. I'm like, and I'm like, um, right now? He's like, yeah, right now. I'm like, dang. I'm like, all right. So anyways, and I, and I share that story because that was the last time I drank. Yeah, that was the last time I drank alcohol. Yeah, so. And, it's, and I say it with excitement because, I say it with excitement because if it wasn't for him calling me, I don't know where I would have stopped, you know? I did go to jail after, but it was a whole different situation. I didn't finish something I had to finish for court, or whatever. Um, and I ended up spending seven months in the county. So um, yeah, so it was a tough time. I did question God a lot. Like I did, like when I went in there, I'm like seven months for something so simple. And uh, but little did I know that he was, um, that he was. Um, though I had health issues that I didn't know about, and I didn't pay. Well, I didn't pay attention to him, and I, I had a physical in there and all that because I spent some time in there, and I found that I was like, I was my diabetes, my numbers were really high, so. Um, so yeah, like I had blood pressure, but diabetes was the bad part, and that's where I started. Um, like I realized, like wow, if I wouldn't have came in here, I wouldn't have found out about this diabetes. So that was one of the parts. So the health reasons, and then um, I mean, God just worked in there while I was in there. I was very uncomfortable, obviously, but um, I had to um, be open-minded and understand. I questioned God. I did question God. Why is this happening to me if I'm over here? You know, being in the men's ministry, going to church, I have my kids, and all of a sudden, this happens to me. Um, but he spoke to me in there. I was able to share with other brothers, and then there was another pastor here that was in the in the prison ministry. Uh, thank God he was able to go there, and he shared with me there. So he visited me, um, and then there's a brother that worked, that comes here. He was <laughs> he was actually the one of the officers that was in there. So I was able to fellowship in there with him. And uh, so it was, it was. It was a bad time, but um, but I, God did work in there. So and and also, um, then I would. I found out these guys right here. Like I would call him collect. Like the first time I called him, I'm like, I told my sister. I used to talk to my sister. I'm like, hey, can I call? Tell Albert if I can call him. He's like, yeah, call me collect. So I called him collect, and the brothers were there because it was on a Wednesday, and then they get together on Wednesdays for um, at his at his place, and uh, and I remember that they were all there. And um, that, 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 you know, that encouraged me because it showed me love, you know, they, that they love me, that you guys love me. Not only you, your, brother, your family, I told you, your, your family has been a blessing. Because um, not only him, his whole family, like when extended family, his brothers and his dad and his mom, just his whole family is just a blessing, man. And they reached out to me and, and the brothers. So, so, so I felt love, you know, I grew up you know, troubled, so I didn't know this kind of love. I'm like, what is this, you know? And it was just, you know, because it was God's love. So, yeah. Amen, amen. You know, he did, he hit it right in the nose. It's God's love. You know, Paul writes, it is God's love. It compels me, right? And again, that's what it is. And I was telling you, again, uh, it, it was so, God, 
You know, because like I said, there were some times I said, I don't know, this guy looks like he's not, but I love it. How God love never gives up, right? And again, as one thing I, I wanted to, him to share, I said, listen, you know what, maybe you have somebody that you're like, I've been inviting him and he's not coming, responding. Let me tell you something. One of the fruits of the Spirit is what? Love. And what is the other one? Patience. 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 You know what? It only comes from God. And again, the Lord gave me so much patience with him, but it, it was worth it. Because again, what I see what's happening here now, no. Isaiah 55 tells us, eight, I think eight, verse 89, it says that his thoughts are not his ways are not our ways. For his ways are higher as the heavens and the earth, so are his thoughts are our thoughts. So it's so beautiful because we never, I never planned, never saw that we, this day was going to be here. But again, it's for the glory of God. You know, so right now, man, listen, as you say, you know, if you're going through something, and you're like, man, I don't know, let me tell you something. God has a plan for you. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. If Rudy didn't go through what he was going through, we want to have this video, this testimony. And that's my next question, Rudy. You know, we're, we're building a testimony, you know, we know that it brings glory to God. But you know what? Also, you share a little bit how you get involved, you know, because really important, like as he was sharing, that you guys get involved. Because you know what? Again, if, you, if it's just man's great, but, you know, beautiful thing about this church, we have so many ministries going on. Again, getting involved is really important, as he said, because if you don't get involved, the enemy will pull you back. But again, I remember when I first saw him and he came out, I saw he was doing good. I was like, Rudy, you got to get involved. You got to do usher, do something, you know. Because what it is, I told men, listen, when you serve, it's accountability for you. It is. You know what? You, you, it's accountability. You know, when the enemy comes, and no, you know, I'm serving in the Lord. I want to destroy my testimony, you know. I would tell men, you know, here, you're, you know, you, you probably, the enemy says, hey, go back to drink. And like, no, they're going to see me ushering or doing something. No. And it's a good accountability. That's why, that's why I told me, get involved. You know, you get involved to a point that the enemy cannot mess with you because you're so busy in the things of the Lord. But again, one of the things that I saw is Rudy never, ever thought that he would be part of the kids' ministry. That right there really shocked me because wow. never thought that Rudy was going to mess with the Lord. Because I was like, okay, Lord, uh, where do you want him? Because uh, I really want him to get involved. So share a little bit about it, how he, you came in and, 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 and how your kids were part of it now. Yeah, so, um, is it on? Yeah, oh. Um, I first started at, at the security. So I was, uh, there was a guy here that uh, invited me to come in and serve. And um, and at first I was, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't really want to. And, and he encouraged me. He said, okay, I said, okay, I'll give it a try. I came and I did it for a season. It was cool. It was, it was nice. I got to know more people. And then I went to the ushers. And, um, and I did that for a while too. Um, that was cool. And then I stopped serving. So, and when I stopped serving, is when I got in trouble. So, yeah, no, and I say that, and I want to emphasize on that, because when I stopped serving, I got in trouble. And, um, and, and then I, I got out of jail, and then I sat, um, I, I sat in the sanctuary. My son, so my son Abraham, he, um, um, dang, hold on, that's tough. Yeah, no, because you know, like I've shared, you know, in my video, my kids got taken away by DCFS. You know, so um, my son Abraham, um, while I was in jail, he started serving. You know, and um, in the kids ministry, and um, when I got out, I didn't serve. I went to the sanctuary, and I was, you know, I was praising God and. Um, and uh, just I was just so content, and everything was good. And um, but I wasn't serving. And uh, it's funny because the kids, you know, my son says one th one day he tells me, "Hey, Dad, um, when we got to church, he said, how come you don't serve in the children's ministry?'" Oh, I said, "No, that's not for me." And um, and I said, and I thought about it, and um, and I remember being in, in in service, and I felt very uncomfortable for what he what he told me. It was like conviction, right? It was like my son, he's. 12 years old, and he's telling me, you know, how come I'm not serving? And I'm like, come on. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I thought about it and everything, and then, um, and uh, so I was in service, and um, and there's a couple of scriptures that I just want to share that convicted me, and um, because it, it was that service, I don't remember which one it was, but it was um, where um, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And and that really, that really spoke to me because I was, you know, I was telling God, I love you for what you've done. I love you 
for, you know, use for your salvation, for, you know, all, all these reasons. But, you know, I wasn't serving. And I just felt God tug at my heart. It's like, feed my sheep. And, what, you know, that has a lot of meanings. But at the, for me, what it meant is that I need to go serve because it means to serve others, you know, to serve other people. To, as, as a body, we serve each other. So anyway, so that, that, that spoke to me, and, and I said, okay, God, if it's you, you know, then I'll go serve, you know, just, and that's when I walked out of the main sanctuary, and I ran into Pastor Steph, which was running the children's ministry, and I said, oh, shh, yeah, okay, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's like, hey, Rudy, how you doing? And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm doing good, and he goes, I'm going to go get Abraham, because I used to go and pick him up from the children's ministry, and he's like, oh, I said, wow, I need to ask him. And I go, hey, I want to, that's when I see my video. I say, hey, I want to, you know, serve. He was like, oh, when do you want to start? So, and, so yeah, that's how it started. I mean, all of a sudden, just like that. And I, n- I haven't stopped serving since. And I wasn't only going to do it for a season. But I came to realize that, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing. You know, it works both ways. I'm blessed and the kids are blessed. And that's how the body works, you know, is that we all function together. We're all part of, you know, we're, give, we're given a gift. Uh, and that gift, you know, we have to look to see where that gift is. It might not be in security. It might not be as an usher. It might be in the children's ministry, which is the weirdest thing because I already had a lot of kids and I didn't want to deal with kids. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it, it worked out for me. And, and it's been a blessing ever since. Like, I just love on the kids and, I mean, they, they, they get excited when they see me. I guess that's love. I don't know. And um, so, yeah, yeah, that's... Praise God. And uh, I know during the time that he was serving, you know, he, we were still, we were still talking. He would call me, you know, brother, you know, uh, you know, he was, you were pretty much single for how long? Mm-hmm. Oh, eight years. Yeah. Eight years. And mm-hmm. he would call me, brother, help me pray, you know, for purity, you know, and to be content where I'm at. You know what? And we will pray with them. You know what? And I love it because here, First Peter 5.10, that verse, it's so beautiful. It says, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And as he was going through, he was serving. Let me tell you, and I know even though you're serving, the enemy still attacks. He wants to destroy. Uh, he wants to take you back to your own nature. But I love it. Brother, we're still serving, faithful. We still had that fellowship. We still had courage. We'll come. We'll pray for one another. But it's so beautiful because as him, as he was serving, as we were praying, you know, for him to, to stay pure and to, to be content where he's at, you know what? He still was still faithful serving. You know, nothing really took him from the love of God, even though that at the moment for eight years, you know, for him to be single, and I, I was a man, brother, I, I, I know some men are different. We want to, we, we need that helper, we need that companion. But I remember praying for him and to see that brother faithfully serving, even in that season, the moment, they knowing that, you know what, it's okay. I'm content where I'm at. And I love it because I remember I talked to him, he was appointed, I'm content. I'm content if I'm going to be single for the rest of my life, well, I'm going to be single. But I love it during this time as he was serving, that's when he did his testimony, right? He did testimony. So uh, let us know a little bit about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess um, that, that um, opened the door for the, uh, where I'm at now. Yeah, where I'm at now. I just got married two weeks ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that played a part. I mean, we, we were already talking for a bit, and, you know, we were courting. Uh, we, we weren't courting yet, but I think that was, the, that was it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so that, um, that, um, that helped a lot. And, and um, so, yeah, after that... Um, I was blessed, and I was blessed with this wonderful uh, woman, and uh, praise God, I'm, I'm married now, so. I love it because, you know, she was sharing how, you know, uh, he mentioned, I know he didn't say that, I think she saw your video, right? Mm-hmm. She saw your video, yeah. and. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, I mean, yeah, she saw it, and she was like, what? But, I mean, we had already been talking, but, yeah, she, <laughs> it was cool, it, it was, yeah. But yes. it's so beautiful. Again, as he was sharing his testimony, not even knowing that the Lord was already preparing behind the scene his helper. You know what? Mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful. Again, uh, again, he said he got married to, to, 
two weeks ago, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know, and again, I, I had the honor to be the best man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even as I was, I was sharing with with him uh, at his uh, uh, um, uh, the reception. I remember I told everybody, I told everybody, I said, "Listen, it, it is an honor to take that position." But I go, "I don't deserve it." I told him, and he was there. Remember what I said, Rudy? Mm-hmm. I say, "The best man is Jesus Christ." Amen. I said, Amen. "Because if it wasn't Jesus Christ living in me, I would have not loved on him. I would have gave up on him." You know, I would have give up on him. Yeah. But it was because the love of Christ that compelled me to continue. And that's why I did that day. And I said, listen, you know, I, can't, I, I don't want to take no credit. You know, thank you, Rudy, but let's give credit who the credit is due. And the best man is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And again, it's so beautiful, again, to be part of it, to see what the Lord's doing. And again, now as he was doing the kids' ministry, I love it because now as he's taking a new ministry, which is marriage. It's, it's a ministry, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ministry itself. And again, so we're going to pray for Rudy again because I know that um, that testimony that he's continuing to build. And now being, again, uh, married, you know, I know that the enemy is, is going to still. The enemy doesn't stop. That's what he knows, and he knows that we continue to get involved. We continue to stay connected, you know, and now Rudy's going to join the marriage ministry and, and be part of, of what the Lord's going to do there because, you know, he knows that apart from Christ, we can't do nothing. And, man, it's so important that we, that we remember that, again, as you saw Rudy's testimony, and it is for the glory of God we talked about last week, right? You know what? Uh, building a testimony. Paul built a testimony. But it wasn't easy, and for Rudy, it wasn't easy too. And right now, you might say, well, you know, things are not going good. Let me tell you something, man. God is going to use that for his glory. So one day I could tell you, and Rudy probably will tell you himself, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. Continue fighting the good fight of faith. And again, we, we quoted that verse, Matthew 6 or 3, right? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And all the things should be added to you. It doesn't say seek first the things, right? No, the kingdom of God. Right. Seek. And man, as you get involved, let me tell you something. Continue. Get involved. Get involved. Get connected with the man, whatever it is, marriage life, man's ministry. You know what? In, especially in this group time. Let me tell you something, man. The Lord in the group time, I've seen. I was part of it. I remember I used to come. I had a group myself. Men were uh, discipling me and encouraging me. I was going through times. But again, as we commit, as we submit to the Lord and to his will, man, he'll take you places, man, that you wouldn't even imagine. And again, Rudy, thank you again for coming up. I know uh, it took a lot for you to be here, but again, it's a blessing uh, and, and, and to be part of it uh, again. And, and I know that uh, a lot of men that, you know, the Lord uh, has uh, put in my heart to love on. And again, but Rudy, uh, he was the one to stand out. And I love it how Rudy said, you know, because we, we talked about last week, as Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? He goes, Albert, I want to I wanna do what you're doing like you, you and your wife doing. And I tell him, all you do is just imitate me. I say, I imitate Christ. And again, I know Rudy, again, uh, as he goes into a new ministry, again, uh, I know the Lord is going to use him if he continues to walk the walk of faith. And I know that this walk, sometimes we want to see, right? We want to see the vision. Well, Lord, I want to see first one go, but no. Let me tell you something, man. We walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. The Bible says, without faith is what? To please God. Amen. Well, let's pray for Brother Rudy again. Thank you, Brother Rudy, for coming out. And again, this is one of the ways, again, man, we do life together through testimonies. Amen. And God, I thank you again, Father, for this night, Father. We thank you again for even... Rudy, Father, as he came up and to, to share his testimony. And Father, I know that uh, he went to his ups and downs. But I know in the midst of his downtime that he was going through, Father, Father, he knew, Father, you were still at work. And maybe some men here right now probably say, well, I'm right now, it seems like things are not going my way. Things are falling apart. But Father, we know that even though sometimes we think they're falling apart, they're actually coming into place. And I pray for each man here, Father. Again, Father, pray that they will be strengthened you, knowing, Father, that the work you started in their life, you will complete it. And, Father, I just pray right now for Rudy, Father, as he takes in a new ministry marriage. And I know, Father, he was, even I remember as he was uh, getting, about to get married again, he was like, man, I'm a little bit afraid. But I love it because, you know what? What reminds us is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of understanding who you are. And who you are, God, is a good God. God that loves us. A God that wants the best for your children. And again, I know, Father, for Rudy's marriage, we lift it up, Father. We pray for his wife, his children, Father. 
Father, as they know they're coming into new ministry, we know that there's going to be bumps. There are going to be ups and downs. But to be reminded, Father, that you're in control. That, Father, your word says that you never, will never leave us or forsake us. And I pray, Father, you will bless Brother Rudy as he embarks into the new ministry. Father, as we know, Father, you're going to use it for your glory. And for each man here, Father, I pray yes. that they will leave encouraged to know that you're our work too, Father. That if you could uh, do something mi mighty in Rudy's life, you could do something mighty in their yes. life. And Father, we pray again, Father, be glorified. Mm. And be with us, Father, as we continue, Father, this night as the men get into the group time, Father. I just pray that men would just open up. And Father, as your word says, Father, again, as we confess our sins to one another, you're faithful to forgive. I pray the men open up, that they will uh, just surrender to you, Father. Surrender to your plans. Because your word reminds us in Matthew 16, 25, that whosoever would try to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I pray that each man here will get lost in, and that they will find a will and purpose for their life. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Let's give you three of those.